Welcome back to the manor. Julian McBain here, and we are back with Cyrene and Entropia Universe. So, today we're going to be doing something that I don't do very often. We're going to be doing kind of a beginner's guide. And this is a beginner's guide to Cyrene. I do think Cyrene is one of the best planets for new players. And so we're going to go through a couple of strategies for new players on Cyrene. Hmm, apparently had a uh, mission that wasn't finished. So when you come to Cyrene, there's a few things you want to do if you're a new player. Whether you transport here via a, um, a taxi or you take a mothership um, or if you... Uh, get yourself a quad wing or a sleep near and transport yourself over here when you get here there's a few things you're going to want to do to start out first off i recommend this for everyone i didn't do this for years it was a big mistake spend the money on the highest level starter kit you get a shitload of stuff and the weapon that you get in the starter kit is the most efficient thing you will find by far, it's better than the adjusted bukins. It's better than the the Rubios or any of that stuff. For bang for your buck, the Barbarella is the best weapon with the attachments that are fantastic for beginners. Invest in yourself. Save the money. I am not uh, sponsored by Mindark, so this is not a paid slot. That would be cool, though. When you get to Cyrene, you're going to end up on that platform there. And then you're going to go to a teleporter, much like this one. You're going to choose the rookie training area, which is a pre. It's the one that you get automatically. Once you're here, you're going to come up to this tent. So see where we're at. It, it's pretty obvious on the platform where to go. You can watch any of my other videos where I'm on Cyrene. You'll probably see it. From this teleporter, you're going to pop up here to this pavilion. You're going to talk to the Zin Kim Bro and pick up the Panleon Kill Points mission. From there, you want to go into the weak Panleon Hunts instance. Now, you can go around this corner and just do overworld hunting to the same level. They have the same power. There are advantages to using an instance, though, and we're going to go through why that's important for newer players. Although there is some importance to hunting in groups. The, the downside to doing it here is you're competing with other players for mobs, right? So I can, I can just grab a mob here and get my kill points that way. But you'll see there's a hunter here, Dominica. There's a sweater over here, Kristen. Um, and the problem with sweating out in this area is that you might find hunters who... Most of the time, hunters are not the type to steal sweaters um tar sweat targets oh Hello. oh he's one of my subs okay uh, shout out to uh is it ursusenko make sure i'm pronouncing it right lord ursulinko shout out to lord ursulinko glad to see ya since they've developed the weak Panleon Hunts uh, instance, things have become a lot easier for both hunting and swunting in general. And here's the reason. You are alone in this instance. 100% alone, which means you're not competing for anything. You don't have to worry about accidentally kill stealing. Now, it does mean that you're alone, and so there's no social interaction. You can make up for that by doing, like, the hashtag Sirene uh, chat zone. People still talk in there. PM some of your friends that you've already made. Just like, I'm pretty sure this is Lord Urshisenko, Ursh Ursulinko. Sorry, man. Um, messaging me because he saw me in chat. Um... I'm just going to verify. Yep. But. Hope things are well. Okay. So I will, I'll talk to him after the video's over. 
I just wanted to let him know that, yes, I saw his message. I'm not ignoring him. Um, so yeah, so here is the instance. And I did a video on this earlier. But here's the thing. We've got Panleons. They're the right level. They're weak. And they're far enough apart to where no matter what weapon you choose to develop, you don't have to worry about drawing more than one at a time. Not only that, but you auto-loot without needing an auto-loot pill. So you'll see the advantages there. Now, as you can see, there's some sweat here. This is also a fantastic place to swunt. So if you are someone who wants to do as close to free-to-play as possible, and we're not going to take a lot of bottles off this mob. Generally, I will empty a mob before killing it. That's what you should do when you swunt. But I'm just going to make sure I can make the point here. So we're going to take a couple bottles off this mob and then kill it. This is a great place to swunt because there's no chance of me running into another mob so long as I am reasonably far back toward the wall. They don't wander very much, if at all. See, this mob is pretty much stationary. In the overworld, mobs wander. And if you're hunting them... Mobs will deliberately wander toward other mobs in most areas. It's actually, I don't know if it's on purpose or if it's algorithmic. If I had to make a guess, it's because that's what real animals would do if they know they're being hunted. They would attract themselves to um, their own herds to try to mix in. And since everything in this game is dangerous, then you could have five, six mobs on you sp um, spamming you, and then you're you're toast. That's a that's a waste of money. Don't be doing that. Um, for those of you who are new to Entropia Universe, uh, quick breakdown: Entropia Universe is a real cash economy game. Everything in the game has real money value. That includes the money on my ped card, Project Entropia dollars, which have a, a direct PED to USD exchange rate. You can withdraw money out of here with a 1,000 ped minimum withdrawal, which comes to $100 USD. If you grind enough, you can actually make money off the game. Now, how much money? Well, let's put it this way. Not a lot. It works just like real life. If you put money in, you'll make more money. If you don't put money in, frankly, you'd make more money at a minimum wage job by a long shot. On the other hand, if you do what a lot of players do, they'll be out sweating, which is what I'm doing here. We'll grab one more bottle off this mob and then shoot it. And then they'll have something playing in the background. Or actually, technically, this will be in the background. They'll be playing something in the foreground. As an example, being a YouTuber, one of the things that I will do while uh, swunting is I'll watch uh, videos and courses, take courses on lessons on how to increase my ability on YouTube. Um, other people will watch Doctor Who or Star Trek or um, The Office, Jay and Silent Bob. You know, I'm not sponsored by any of the production companies of the video of the shows that I just dropped the names of. Um, but these are things that I know people like. So that's what you can do. And, you, and, and you're earning, yeah, you're earning pennies, but you're not doing nothing. And it develops your avatar in the game on the platform while you do it. Other people use it as social time. If you go to Club Royal on Calypso, you'll find one of the nicest, coolest, mature social groups you have ever found. And they just sit there and chat while they're sweating the, the mobs there. They're not really there to play the game per se, although they do play the game. They're more there for the social the socialization. So you come, you, you set up, you sweat the mobs. Maybe you're there for an hour or two. You know, maybe you've got... I don't know, Forged in Fire in the background. I don't know, what's the, what's the popular video for most, you know, Millennials and Zedders these days? Um, Zoomers, excuse me. I'm a Millennial myself, and I'm too much of a geek to know. But if you, if you set yourself up to where, you know, you've got the kill points strategy or um, mission, 
you're doing the Panleon challenge in the Codex. You sweat the mob until it's dry. And then you kill the mob and you move on. You're, you're actually hitting several points. One, sweat. It's all free labor. That's all you're doing. You don't have to put a penny into the game in order to sweat mobs. Killing the mob costs you a little bit of money, but it also gives you skills. You're increasing your Panleon challenge rating slowly, but that will give you more skills. You're getting the Panleon kill points rating slowly, but that will give you more skills. So really, you're hitting the platform at like five different directions at once. Then, if you are the type that wants this to become a, an income generator long term, which it can do, it's not easy, it's not quick, not by a long shot, and in all likelihood, you're going to put money in before you start taking money out, and it will take you years, if not a decade. Here's the strategy, newbies, on how you can do it. And I'm going to tell you, it's easier if you do it in a place where you're not sweating and you're just straight sweating, like at Club Royal, or if you're doing uh, Half Moon Cove on Calypso because you can drag the mobs into the water and drown them instead of having to shoot them. You're not going to get the skills that way, but you're, gonna, you're not going to spend the money on the ammo either. And as Melky has shown us, you can swunt at a profit, even though that profit is very minute. With the 10 to 1 exchange, I think in all of the experiments, he's made maybe a couple of dollars but that's not the point the point is it's profitable right and then you take the profits from your sweating and you buy ancient greece shares crystal palace state shares or um what do they call my brain's failing me arcadia underground deeds arcadia moon deeds these are passive income generators right and they generate the ped that you use to actually hunt. So what you do is you go out, you sweat mobs. And that grind is going to take you a long time. Just be prepared for it. Maybe you maybe you put a few dollars in. Well, you, you get ammo for doing the starter kit. So you put that 70 bucks in. Record it in a spreadsheet. Seriously, record it in a spreadsheet. And you use all that ammo to swunt. And you're swunting and you're swunting and you're swunting. The ammo slowly goes down. You're recycling your, your shrapnel. You do what few repairs that need to be done, which the sweat should actually pay for that fairly easily. Because currently it's like 1.4 ped per K on sweat. And even with all the hunting that has been done in the videos under down here, we're not even a full ped out. So we're good there. And that's with a bunch of swanting in between. So you can do it. This is why this gun's important. No armor. This is all regular clothing. Clothing doesn't get damaged by hunting. Wear your jumpsuit. You swunt and you swunt and you swunt and you swunt and you swunt. You find a sweat buyer. Um, let me see. Is he still on? Uh, as an example, Demorbius uh, Wenelius is a sweat buyer. There are plenty of sweat traders out there. They'll buy the sweat for anywhere between... 0.8 and 1.6 ped per K, depending on what the market looks like. You then take that money. You rinse, repeat, you know, use that money to do your repairs. Rinse, repeat, set some aside. When you have the ped, um, 10 ped for an ancient grease share is a good example. So ancient grease shares are um, as low as 9.5 ped per, per share. They don't pay out very often, so the more you spend on a share the or a, a deed, the more often it's going to pay out, and the higher level it's going to pay out. Crystal Palace shares tend to pay out once every Monday. They do pretty well, but you're going to be spending $17.95 per share on those, which is a much longer grind. Um, but you gather those passive income generators, and then you use the money from the passive income generators to hunt. See how that works? The sweat buys you the passive, the passive buys you the hunt. Long term, that's the winning strategy. If you don't want a depot. If you don't want a depot. If you want a depot, have at. Find your own strategy. I'm a depositor. I know for a fact it's because that was a decision made because of what my goals were in the, on the platform. Your goals are going to be different from mine. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Even if only slightly. 
figure out what your goals are, make a conscious decision, follow through. That's the only way to do this. That's the only way to live on this platform. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. But this instance in particular is a really good place to do this. And as you can see, no interruptions, no multiple pulls. You just, you do the job. You hunt the mobs, you get the points. If you want to swunt, you come down here, you sweat the mob out, you kill the mob. And you can spend hours down here and never accidentally cross pull or have someone steal a kill. Been there, done that. And that way it's actually a relaxing time, you know? Sign in, start swunting. If it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, watch Bonnie in the evenings in America. The late night if you're in Europe. You know, watch a TV show. Read a book. Although, be careful reading a book because you can. it's easy to get sucked into books. Just keep an eye up once in a while. Another thing you can do, set yourself to sweat. Go do a chore. Come back every five minutes or so to check your progress to make sure you're not... Um, to make sure the mob isn't dry. If the mob is dry, kill the mob, move on to the next one. These are all things you can do. And that way your, your avatar is constantly producing. You're not wasting time. And you're multitasking. The thing about the Entropia platform is it's what you make of it. It's not just a game. At its core, it's a game, but it's not just a game. And it hasn't even come close to its full potential yet. With Entropia Universe moving to UE5 sometime in the next few years, there's going to be a huge uptick in the use of its potential. But even then, the likelihood of it meeting its full potential is, is not huge because it's heavily reliant on players utilizing the potential of the platform. Mindark has given us a sandbox. It's time to creatively use that sandbox to figure out and utilize its full potential. Here are the things that Entropia Universe could really use in order to make its potential come to its full force. And it's up to us as players to determine what the niche is that you want to be in Entropia, as an, as, a, as an Entropian, forget players, as an Entropian, you have to make the decision on what kind of a, an Entropian you want to be and put the work in to make it work. Because if, if we can do that, we'll have the most robust econo digital economy in the world, better than EVE Online, which unfortunately beats Entropia Universe hand down, even though it's, because uh, all of the stuff there does have a, a real world money equivalency due to the ISK rate. But you can't withdraw from there. You can withdraw from here. In fact, it's against Eve's uh, terms of service to do real money transactions. Outside of a very, very limited scope to my understanding. And Eve players, please fact check me on that because I've never played Eve. Um, but here are things that this platform could use. Beyond the standard content creators like this. Like... Content creators for tutorial videos are a dime a dozen. Even in Entropia Universe, there are several of us out there making this type of content, which is why um, all of us do other things too, whether it's within the platform or without. Things Entropia Universe could really use. Podcasts. Traditional podcasts, like buy an apartment, furnish it, find other players, sit down and talk with them over like a, a discord or something to be, be the joe rogan of entropia universe can you imagine what this how this platform would explode if we were doing if someone was doing professional podcasts like that like joe rogan-esque podcasts on the platform utilizing platform assets and yeah you'll have to do some editing and maybe some animation and ue5 will be a much bit more conducive platform for that or engine for doing that because of all of the accessories you can get for it but just think of the potential there you're having a sit down you've got familiar players you got maybe you'll you you start out by having an interview with serial overdrive and you're just hanging out in an apartment in say um I don't know, one of the cities on Calypso. 
and you do the interview and it's all cool and chill and you do the whole thing and it's half an hour or an hour long and you just interview him about his experience on the platform. He's been doing this for 20 years, I believe. Serial, uh, fact check me on that, please. You you would know that better than anyone. Um, he's been doing it for a damn long time in any case. Well, you can't do it for 20 years because we haven't hit the 20 year mark in Entropy Universe, but you know what I mean. He's been here longer than any of the other content creators to my knowledge that are still active. Let's put it that way. So, you know, you interview Serial Overdrive, and then maybe you do Raven Jade, and maybe you do Lore Spade, and then you find other players within the platform. The, the owners of big industries, the devs for Next Island, there are, and, and if you do this weekly, you've easily got a year's worth of podcasts. Easily got a year's worth of podcasts. And then, what other things can be done? Well, we've already got landowners. We don't have a whole lot of events. I mean, okay, we've got basic hunting events and shit like that going down, and there are land grabs. But maybe you can do a PvP event where there's a prize. Make PvP worth doing. Because there are players who love doing PvP. I actually don't mind PvP. I find it to be fun. I don't do it very often because there's no point to it when there's no there's no trophy to be had. Hunting random players, besides being a violation of the NAP in essence, it's 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 not fun. You're just doing it for no reason. You know, there's a reason that most of the a lot of the not most, a lot of the PVPers are pirates because they get something out of it. If someone were to hold an event that was PVP in nature, and there was a prize for it, players would flock to it. I... Hunting events. Do a fat... Monria... Uh, is it Monria? Monria has a fashion show every year. Do a fashion show. Have a prize for that. Do a race. Which, to be fair, would be hard, but there are places like here on Cyrene where... Um, you can do, like, I believe it's in this area here. The, this Coney, there's basically, it's a ruin. There's basically a track there. Who can get the best sweet jump? And if you're holding stuff like that, you'll have the power to negotiate with Mindark. Say, hey, we've been holding this event. It's okay, but we'd like some tools to make it cooler. Can we add an item like NOS? To make the races more spectacular. If you're utilizing the platform. And causing players to spend money on the platform. Mindark will work with you. Because they're not stupid. You've got to build a rapport. You've got to provide them value first. You've got to be doing the thing for a while. But let's say you spend a year. And you're like we're going to organize drag races. And because of the speed of vehicles. It's all going to be about the vehicle. And the skill of the player doing it. So you make sure that the. There's turns in there or some sort of relay or something like that to make sure that the player has to pay attention. So Because you can't really drag race with what we've got in the game here very well. It's just going to be a, a matter of who hit the button first and if you don't hit obstacles. But if you do like a relay format and the goal is to get from point A to point B, let's say from... Um, you know, the, the border teleporter to high desert teleporter... Which, yes, I know there's a bunch of hills there, which would make that extremely difficult. But just hear me out on this. If Let's say that that was the goal, as an example. You've got the whole thing pathed out. The goal is to make it from point A to point B in as little time as possible. Choose your vehicle, go. No flyers. And, of course, because it's a, a race, you have, say, two players. And the passenger seat are two refs to make sure the players don't cheat. And then whoever makes it there first gets a, an AUD. Right? And an... an Arcadia Underground Deed. And it's 100 pet entry per player. Because, of course, that's a, that's a pretty expensive prize. Well, there you go. You know, you've, you've got the prize. You take the profit. You divvy it up among the players who had to do the work to make it the game, the, the, the thing work. 
The winner takes their prize. And the losers try again. And you've got an event. You could hold that weekly. And maybe if you get like three or four players going, you can lower the cost of tickets. Let's say you've got four players. Well, now instead of charging 100 ped per player, maybe you charge 75. That way the, the people putting the time into ref the, the races can get their ped as well because they, they shouldn't have to do it for free. So yeah. And realistically, it wouldn't even have to be that bad because instead of having a player in every car, a, a ref in every car, you could have them in like a sleep near just kind of hovering over because realistically, there's going to be a quick path to one, from one teleporter to another. There's not going to be only one way, but they're not going to be that far apart from each other. So you don't, you shouldn't have to worry about cheating very much in a, in a race like that. But this is just an example. So... There, there's some ideas on how the platform could be utilized more. This platform is underutilized. You as players, you newbies, you new players are the ones that are going to bring out the potential. The old guard won't. And I'm not saying anything bad against the old guard. Some of them are friends. Some of them are people I've known for years. All cool people. Some of them are fellow YouTubers like me. Doesn't matter. It's... It's the new people who bring the fresh eyes to the platform and come up with new ideas. Never let someone discourage you from trying to utilize a new idea. Never, never, never let them do that. If they do, tell them to fuck off. You never know until you try. And you might have to try five or six times before you come close to a success or find figure out that, okay, this actually isn't practical. And you know what? Fair enough. But never let someone else say you can't do it. Determine it for yourself. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers. One subscription at a time. So make sure you subscribe. And as always, I really appreciate the support. Hey, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to Entropia Universe, please consider subscribing to the channel and becoming a patron. Patrons get exclusive content every single month. Uh, there is more content planned for patrons only as well. That's currently in the planning stages, but by mid next year, there should be some extra content coming out. So be on the lookout for that. There will be announcements about that, of course. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.